All right, peoples, so this is Ross, and today I have a very amazing fruit to show you guys. It's called a persimmon, and um, I'm crazy about persimmons. It's actually my second favorite fruit behind figs. It's very easy to grow here. Um, I want to show you guys all about my trees. And we're going to do a tasting right now and show you guys the fruits right now, and then after I do the tasting, I'm going to bring you guys around the house um, and we're going to do a little bit of a tour and show you guys some of my trees and talk about varieties and whatnot. Right now in front of me is two persimmons and you might think they're pretty damn similar, but they're not. Um, the one on this hand here, I don't know if that's your left or right, but my left, this is an astringent persimmon. And the one on my right is a non-astringent persimmon. This is a, a Fuyu that we bought at the store. It's actually a bit underripe. You can see how much of a darker orange color this is. This one was ripened on my tree. This one's called Miss Kim. That's the variety name. And the difference between uh, the two of them, again, is the astringency. Um, so you have to eat this one soft because when the fruit starts to soften up, and almost kind of bled. Uh, there may be a there may be a, be, a, a better word for it, uh, but they have to literally just sit on your counter, or you can let them soften up on the tree. A frost will also activate that softening process and speed that up. Um, you know, it is a fall fruit, so in the fall when the frosts come, that's usually what will happen. Is that if you let them hang on the tree, they'll get hit with a frost. So I picked mine off before the frost came in and I let them ripen on my counter. And we have one down right here. This is an astringent persimmon, Miss Kim, that's super gooey and super soft. The skin is like, a, I guess a tomato. You know how it's, it's kind of, you know, there's like a really thin layer of skin. And then if you squeeze it, it's way softer than any tomato you've ever felt. And this is about when they should be eaten as astringent persimmons. Now, a non-astringent persimmon, I can eat this right now. I could bite into this. I'm not going to because this is not going to be as good. I really should have a, a more well-ripened non-astringent persimmon for you. But this one's more hard like an apple, more crunchy. Um, it has a different texture, has a, even a different flavor. These kind of taste like cinnamon sugar is a, a decent description. My girlfriend just rolled her eyes at me. But sometimes they get kind of dark on the inside and they really kind of bring out the sugars. It's a very sweet fruit. Um, really is my favorite uh, behind figs. And this astringent one really changes the flavor. The sugars really increase and you get a magnificent piece of fruit. Uh, so let me, I already been into this and I couldn't believe how good it was. This is my first real homegrown persimmon. So I can't believe how good that is. I really can't. It may even be better than a lot of figs I've eaten. It probably is. This to me kind of tastes like a marshmallow like that's how sweet it is that's what kind of the sugars in the fruit are, are telling me like there's I think within certain types of fruits uh, they kind of develop like more interesting sugars than other fruits some some fruits that are now becoming more popular like cotton candy grapes we did a review on there's some certain pluots you know, things that they're breeding nowadays, they literally taste like cotton candy. And there's just, I think, some weird, I don't know the science behind it, but this one tastes like a marshmallow very distinctly. And I've actually had a sejo persimmon that reminded us very distinctly of a, of a marshmallow. And I also had a fig just a couple days ago uh, called Sweet Joy that tasted like a marshmallow. Um, so I think there's some kind of uh, theme here within certain fruits that if you get them at the right stage, they really can bring out those flavors. This to me 
I don't know how else to describe this other than a gooey, magical, sugary amazingness. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But uh, <laughs> it's really, really good. So I'm going to enjoy this, and I think you guys seriously should grow persimmons. Obviously for the flavor, but I'm going to take you guys around right now, and we're going to show you guys my trees because they're... One, beautiful trees. When I went to Japan, they have them everywhere as ornamental trees. Uh, the Japanese really love persimmons. Um, the Chinese, lots of Asian cultures, they're big with Asian cultures. And I don't understand, even when I went to Israel, they are so popular there that they're eaten like apples. Um, and I don't understand why they're not as popular as apples are or bananas are here in the United States. That is a going to be a goal of my life, I think, at some point, to promote this fruit to become something as popular as an apple. But I'm going to show you guys the trees because they really are one of the easiest things to grow as well. So let's do that right now. Here are some American persimmons. Now there's really a, well, there's, there's a couple different, there's many types of persimmons, but in the main categories, of persimmons. You have American persimmons, which is what you're looking at here, and you have um, uh, Asian persimmons. And the Americans, this one here is called Celebrity, and this one's called Proc. They're quite hardy to zone five, even I think some of them are even hardy to zone four. So you can pretty much grow these in a lot of places in the United States. They're uh, very adapted to the climates here, and almost nothing bothers them. You know, the leaves look pretty shot right now because the tree's going dormant, as you can see. But uh, normally the foliage is quite green, very beautiful. Nothing bothers these trees. Um, and in fact, I find them to be one of the more reliable fruit trees in my area along a humid climate, such as the Northeast or the Mid-Atlantic. Um, you know, I want to show you guys more of them. so. Those are the Americans, which are quite hardy, but we get a little trickier, right? We can grow some Asian persimmons, which are, by most would agree, are tastier. But the problem with them is that they actually <laughs> are not as hardy. So you have to find varieties, like this little guy here, we grafted this one. This one's called Tam Cam, a non-astringent, persimmon that we grafted onto Virginiana rootstock, which is also quite hardy. And we've also got some trees in here. That one there is Miss Kim, you can see that guy. And we also have uh, a Jiro on the other side of this blueberry plant. So we've got some Asian persimmons and excuse the noise on the road, I apologize. So we can grow Asian persimmons here in Pennsylvania zone seven. Uh, you can even grow some of them in zone six. Uh, they may need a little bit more protection. Maybe the winds will desiccate some of the branches, but you can certainly make them work here. Now, the third option, and probably what's going to become the best option, I think, for most people where I live or slightly colder than where I live, is getting a hybrid persimmon. This is a hybrid between an American and an Asian called Rosianca is the name of this one. There's This one's pretty um, common. You can find this all over. And my tree is huge, as you can see, and this is only, uh, I think, only three years old now on the ground. So this combines the nice flavors and textures and taste qualities in general of an Asian persimmon combined with the hardiness of an American pers persimmon. So this one's hardy down to zone five, just like the Americans, but it tastes like the Asian. So it's it's a nice balance of both. Um, I would suggest growing all three, if you can, um, or at least growing an American, growing a hybrid if you live in a colder place and you can't grow Asians. Taste the differences between the Americans and the Asians. There actually is some quite, uh, different taste qualities there. Now if you live somewhere like where I do in zone 7, I suggest growing this little guy here. This is another tree that I just grafted onto Virginiana. 
This one's called Great Wall, another astringent type that's very, very tasty. Um, you're going to struggle to find in my zone, in zone 7, you're going to struggle to find persimmons that um, are astringent, are non-astringent and Asian. So you can find some more hardy astringent persimmons, no problem, like Great Wall, Sejo is another one, that's what I'm taking you to right now. My Sejo tree is probably my favorite fruit. It tastes exactly like a marshmallow when it's perfectly ripe. They dry very easily. The fruit quality is uh, unrivaled. It means the very best. That's what Sejo means. So here's another Sejo tree that we grafted. And uh, yeah, it's doing quite well. We just put this one in the ground. A lot of these just put them in the ground in the fall. So we'll see how they do here. But Great Wall and Tam Cam, as well as Sejo, are some actual hardy Asian persimmons. Tam Cam is actually an as a non-astringent. So, you know, you can find non-astringent, you know, Fuyu types. That's mainly what I'm talking about when I'm comparing, you know, astringent versus non-astringent. If you're completely new to this, you kind of have to taste the fruit to know exactly what I'm saying. 